The deadliest amusement park rides. Papa Meat. Welcome back to the Papa Meat channel. How you doing? How you doing? Come on in and sit on down. Today we're talking about amusement parks because spring's right around the corner and it's the perfect time for amusement parks to open back up. The weather's gonna be really nice. You get to go on all your favorite rides. Spring and early fall are the only good times to go to an amusement park. If you go to an amusement park in the middle of the summer, it's like a death sentence, man. 95 degrees outside, UV index is like a 12. You're getting sunburnt. You're going to have a farmer's tan because you're wearing a t-shirt and like maybe actually sweatpants or some shit. The air doesn't even feel good when you're on the roller coaster because it's so hot. It just feels like somebody's putting a blow dryer in your face. It's awful. The tragic thing about amusement parks is that death lurks around every corner, which is why I have my duck. God damn it, I forgot my document. Okay, one second. He's been doing a lot of animated, like, collaborations Winslow, here. Winslow, wake up. Winslow. Come on, buddy, wake up. Winslow, you're, ha buddy, you're, you're having a nightmare. Hey. Oh, Hunter. Oh, thank God. Oh, you saved me. I, I was having the He's worst. He's an animator? I know. He runs Meat Canyon. Nightmare. Okay. Um, oh, it was awful. Yeah, I'm sure it was. So, I'm actually doing a video right now on that amusement park video idea, and you still haven't sent me the information on it. Oh, They're waiting for me, so. I'm sorry. That is a I'm... dinosaur of a computer. Just, I didn't know what day it was. We could film it down here if you want. No, I don't. I'm I need to skip through this. I need to. Papa Me, I love you, bro. I can't commentate on this, man. This is just you talking to a computer. I don't, how do you get the decimal point there? It's an average. It's an average? Yeah. It's not about little people. Little people and people that are, have lost limbs. This is down from 4.5 previously. Wait, 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 wait. What's the statistic? Jesus Christ. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. So, from 1990 to 2004, there was an average of 3.7 amusement park deaths annually. I don't, how do you get the decimal point there? It's an average. It's an average? Yeah. It's not about little people. Little people and people that are, have lost limbs. This is down from 4.5 previously. It may have a lot to do with the fact that more stringent laws were put into place. Things were a lot dicey back in the day, and us all, all of us a millennial- What's crazy though is amusement park rides, while they're few and far between, are the most gruesome deaths imaginable. When somebody dies from an amusement park, it is never, oh, they had a heart attack. They got fucking decapitated. Their head flew off. And the whole ride, their headless body was still strapped in with the guy next to him going, ah! Babies and on have actually had a relatively safe amusement park experience. At least so we thought. Despite these deaths occurring in the same place, the deaths are usually related to guests refusing to follow safety protocols, but even still, measures have to be put in place to prevent guests from breaking safety procedures. We're talking about basic fencing, you know, guardrails, time gates, you know, belt buckles, all this kind of stuff really wasn't around totally, which we, I think we overlook today. It's an annoyance. It's a thing that stops Dude, a El Toro at Six Flags. A lot of you guys probably don't know that roller coaster, but I've been on it. It is a wooden, ro a wooden, I repeat, wooden roller coaster, and you only wear a seatbelt, and it goes 75 miles an hour, or some shit like that. <laughs> like, dude, this just looks like it could collapse at any mo This looks like it was made with popsicle sticks. And you get on that, bitch, and people will be throwing their hands up and going, woo! I'm like, you're about to fall off. Little rule for people that don't uh, know this already. Uh, when you when you have the rides that give you like uh, an over the shoulder strap, they're only required to do that if you go in like a loop. I'm pretty sure. So whenever it's just like a seat belt or like a like a bar where your stomach is, that's because it doesn't go fully around. They say. Oftentimes, it's a guest health issue that causes the problem as roller coasters are known to cause blood pressure to spike, which can injure or weaken already stressed arteries and valves resulting in aneurysms, heart attacks, 
and bleeds. AKA, my fat ass is going up on a roller coaster. Are they that deadly? Is it actually not safe to go on a fucking amusement park ride? I thought they had so many safety precautions. You're telling me I could just have a fucking increased chance of having a brain aneurysm if I'm on that fucking ride? Back down. Gross negligence on the park's behalf can account for many injuries, whether from fault in structure, design, maintenance, or even operator error. Sometimes, even nature gets in the way. It's a slippery slope in these big amusement parks meant to be fun with machines that propel you at speeds that you would have never gone before. At times, there's gonna be human error, but sometimes I think God looks down even, and he says, no, 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 you come back to me. And according to the National Safety Council, more than 1,400 ride-related injuries occur every year. And according to the Global Association for Attraction- But what counts as a ride-related injury? I feel like Karens are like, it, it, it gave me a rash. If you fall off, I doubt a ride-related injury is if you fall off. If I'm keeping it real, if you fall off any amusement park ride, you're dead. You're fucking dead. I think that a lot of these places like Disney, they're meant for children, but they're coming for children. The death is coming for those that are young. With the economy failing and parks having to refinance everything, Amusement parks are cutting corners left and right to get people in without having to do all the maintenance and stuff. Yeah, they might throw a little paint on something to make it look new, but goddamn if that thing isn't holding on for dear life. And the end result is always whether or not your safety is profitable. Which one of the more recent events from the Orlando Freefall Drop Tower, which is the world's tallest- Oh, this is the video I saw. Oh my God, it was on fucking Twitter, dude. If this is the one, I don't know if this is the only per, he might be talking about somebody else, but it is the Orlando Drop Tower. It was a 14 year old kid. He's gonna explain it. But they like fucking, they had some jer like the people that are uh, uh, manually fucking attending these rides or attending to these rides, are like usually like minimum wage teenagers or college students and he was like a bigger guy so they had to like fucking loosen the strap and then he literally fucking fell to his death and it's on video oh this freestanding drop tower standing at 400 feet tall the fort oh are they gonna show this hold the fuck up okay now 14 year old boy fell from the ride after not having his harness properly secured and bystanders recorded the incident yeah the that's weight the limit video. was 287 pounds and the child was six foot and weighed 383 pounds the ride operator had only been working for three days at the time of the he was like on the i'll describe it he was like on the ride and it, he was you could tell that it like looks loose and they went up and then as they're going down it's like the last third of the way he slips off the chair and literally just face plants that someone had tampered with the harness and thus the safety sensors did not trigger a warning. I'm a big old boy. Going in- I'm saying they should have just told him he couldn't go on the ride. Don't fuck with the the stuff. If he was too big for the ride, he was too big for the ride. Tell him he can't get on it. Rather than say, oh yeah, let me loosen this with a fucking screw real quick. You get what I mean. I'm going to move on. In this video, I feel personally connected to every morbidly obese child and man or woman out there because my fat ass trying to get into onto Disney rides was difficult. If you're a big old boy and you got some cake, rides aren't worth it. You know what you should have done? Eat a churro. Disney churro is pretty good. Or you can go through the Disney Star Wars experience where you can be really fat and no one cares because you're just walking around a little bit. Or... The seats are like that of like a buffet bench. So it's perfect for me. But my fat ass trying to squeeze onto Space Mountain. Are you kidding me? For these big old, like for people that were built in the 1960s. Are you f kidding me? Yeah, right. To that 14 year old six foot monster of a man. That absolute unit. Godspeed, kid. Godspeed. Without further ado, we're going to get into some of the nation's funnest rides that killed people. So let's get into it. First off, we have Ride of Steel in Darien, New York, Six Flags. I can't remember the last time I went to a Six Flags. I'll tell you, the only thing we had in Kansas City was Worlds of Fun. Not on this list, but there is another little Kansas in, uh, attraction here. That was horrible. It actually really tore the community up. But we're going to be talking about it here in a bit. Anyways, Rite of Steel in Darien, New York, Six Flags. In 2011... I feel like these rides, though, where it's just going, like, up and down, if it's not going on a loop, even if you didn't have a harness on, I feel like it's pretty hard to die. Like, that's why El Toro is still a thing. Like, it's a wooden roller coaster, and you're only wearing a seatbelt, but it literally just goes up, down, up, down, up, down. It goes, like, around on, like, maybe, like, a 15-degree angle, and then it ends. And a 29-year-old army veteran was violently launched out of the ride after he raised his arms to try to hold on to his loose hat. Be really funny if his uh, hat said no fat chicks. <laughs> no! No! 
He was a double amputee and was riding in the front row of the roller coaster. What? What? <laughs> what? I thought that if you didn't have legs, it, you could. There's no way that they eventually said they probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> there's got to be something. Down. So he didn't have legs and he was sitting. How did they? How did they keep? How did they keep him down? That's why he probably fell off the ride. 150 feet, resulting in his death. Because of his lack of legs, it was determined later that he should not have been allowed on the ride since there wasn't anything to secure the lap belt per the safety regulations. I'm. I'm saying this right now, though. If I was with my friend at a ride, his harness opened up and he fell to his death, I would actually fist fight the worker that that did that. You know when you're at a fucking ride and they go, and they check? Whoever fucked that up, oh, I'm fucking throwing down right there. I don't give a shit the repercussions. You killed my friend. Right, like you literally, you're the reason they're dead. I'm laughing and I'm smiling, but it's not because of the no legs thing. A horrible person, and I'm very sorry. Like that's your job. The ride was shut down for two weeks following the incident. This is not the first time. A lot of these- Did they close the park? What do they do? If like somebody falls to their death, imagine like you're a kid just like walking around with your ice cream cone. And you hear, ah! and then some guy just splats right in front of you. Like, do they just shut? I feel like everybody has to go home. They probably refund everybody. There's no way they're just like, shut that part off. We're going to keep the... I would leave, right? Like, if I was at a fucking Six Flags and somebody fell to their death, I'd be like, I'm not going to get on any of these rides today. Something's going wrong. For like a week or two. And they're like, okay. Or they'll paint it and rename it or something. It's unbelievable. And the weird thing about that too is like, it's the uncanny thing of like, if you were buying a house and you knew that someone died on it, would you want to buy the house? Is it, how cheap is it? What kind of person are you? <laughs> Next up is Disneyland. That's a big, thick bit. I have a lot of complaints about Disneyland, and especially the ride that we're talking about now, the Matterhorn. I rode the Matterhorn 30 or 45 minutes before the park was getting ready to close, and that, that ended my night. After I went on the Matterhorn, I was done. So Disney, which is supposed to be the happiest place on Earth, would you be surprised if since it's been open, 26 people have died there? Four people died at Disneyland in 2016? How? That's like, dude, even one person. I would have assumed that no one's... Nah, they had to have like a stroke. They had to have had a stroke, dude. It had to have been some bullshit like that. There's no way it was like, uh, oh, we fucking, we fucking didn't, didn't tighten your bar enough and you fell to your death. It was probably like they had a heart attack on the ride. Which honestly I thought was gonna be much more. Really the numbers for how long have they been open, that's probably not that bad of a rate of people. And the amount of people that come in, but still 26 people died in there. Come on, Mickey. Come on, let's half that up. 13. It's nice to help you, 13. And in 1984, a 48 year old woman was tossed from her bobsled car and was hit by another bobsled car on a track, immediately oh my decapitating God. her. If you've ever been on the Matterhorn, I mean, it, it's, it feels like a fight to survive, anyways. And for a woman to be flung once Somebody more. Somebody dying at a Six Flags would also be less traumatizing than watching somebody get decapitated at Disneyland. If I was going to die on the Matterhorn, I feel like I, I don't know which way it is. Maybe the giant Yeti animatronic falls on you or it's like you know what i mean i was gonna say what if it like ripped you out of the seat and threw you is it a real sasquatch <laughs> okay i'm trying to think that I mean, it's a robot nick and upon investigation it was determined that her seatbelt was not properly oh, fastened god i hate the rides where you get fucking sopping wet dude i do now i never want to go on the fucking log flume whether it came loose during the ride the funniest ones though are when you're going down like the river and it's like that rotating circular ride and it's always like one third of the fucking people get sopping wet and everybody else is like dry. And so you're like gambling who in your group's gonna get fucking doused. Or if the passenger willingly unbuckled it on its own. I went, I'm pretty sure my seatbelt was not totally fastened, but I think I was so suctioned in, being so fat, nothing, nothing could have got me out of that. Remember me even trying to get out of it? Took for a long time. Next up, Action Park, New Jersey, which everybody's heard about this. There was the Johnny Knoxville movie that was made. It's one of those things, it's like a, from the 70s and 80s where people didn't give it safety regulations and they had a lot of stuff. But we're just gonna hone in on one. In 1982, a man got caught on the kayak experience ride promising a simulation of what it's like to go river rafting. 
At one point during the ride, his kayak tipped over, and when he got in the water to tip it back over, he stepped on a metal grate that was too close to live wiring that powered the underwater fans causing the waves. He was electrocuted and went into cardiac arrest, dying shortly after. The park claimed the man wasn't electrocuted because he didn't suffer any burns, even though the coroner claimed underwater electrocutions really cause burns. This begs the question because so far we've just talked about people being flung. Dude, like imagine seeing that. From a ride due to no legs or no seatbelt. So let me ask you this so far. Would you have rather been electrocuted or would you have rather been flung from a deal? Am I instantly killed from the electrocution? I would say no, but just to make it fair as in the idea that you're being flung. So like you have to at least have that mental thing of like, oh my God, right? And then you hit the ground. So you would think that you would at least have to kind of be like, oh, ah! for like a second and then you die. God, you would, would you rather, would you rather die instantaneously or no? I feel like I'd rather just it be instant. Falling to your death on a ride is like, you have that five second, not five second, like two second, oh shit. And then it's it's over, right? Versus like you just instant in, instantly get electrocuted and you're just dead. You die about the same equal time, four seconds. Hey, leave a comment down below, smash that like button and ring the bell. Be sure to subscribe. And also, would you rather be electrocuted from a live wire under a water ride or would you rather be flung from a roller coaster? Wow, Let that is know. literally what we just said. Down below. What, what, which one would you do? Uh, I think to be dramatic, I'd be Why flung. would I suffer a slow death? It's not going to be a slow death. When you hit that asphalt, you're dead. I'm saying, would you rather instantly get electrocuted or instantly die, but have a two second time frame where you're like, I'm going to fucking die. Long. You kind of know what it feels like to fly for a little bit. Next up is Hagrid's Magical Creature Motorbike Adventure in Universal Orlando. First off, redo the fucking name. Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure. Why not just- Oh my ha god, and it was probably some Harry Potter super fan. Hagrid's Motorbike Adventure. Why- And their little cape. I'm a Hufflepuff. Magical Creatures, we get it. We're in Harry Potter world. And this happened in 2019, and the cause of death- Leviosa! Leviosa! Results from bees. Not the bees! For over a month from September into October, Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure was plagued by a nest of honeybees. Since in Florida, honeybees are an endangered species, they could do little to remove it. Despite paying to have them removed, the bees continued to return. The ride had to be closed for several days, and despite relocating, had to be closed again. I don't think anyone dies here. What? Okay, what part of my research here, which I'm gonna slap the f out of my computer Winslow, because no one dies here. Winslow, nobody f died. People just got stung. Well, what if somebody was allergic and they got stung? That'd probably be reported, though. That's what I was hoping for. You were hoping for that. I was hoping someone went to anaphylactic shock and lived, of course. You're horrible. You're a horrible, horrible man. Next up, Holiday Land in Santa Claus, Indiana. Which what a terrible name, dude. Every month that it Being is... Being deathly allergic to bees is horrifying because if you're ever just outside like you could just step on something and they get mad and sting you and now you're fucked the santa claus the jolly red men the reindeers are they actually the reindeers probably you're probably right in holiday land we're talking about the ride the raven which is an enormous swaying wooden roller coaster. The Raven was designed by Custom Coasters International in 1995, and the company, as is, no longer exists as of 2002. That feels suspicious. If this thing happened in 2003 and the company went out of business in 2002, what did they do to this ride to cause this event? A year before the incident, voted number one roller coaster in 2001, its path was designed to mimic the flight pattern of a Raven, and it's themed around Edgar Allan Poe's poem. Which everyone's heard that stupid ass. I am not getting on a ride that's themed after Edgar Allan Poe, a guy that would just write about death and then ended up disappearing. Quaff the raven. Nevermore. The first death on the ride, a guy named Tamar, was sitting in the last car on the coaster and was seen standing as the ride progressed. The raven, as it is. is okay, see, but that's like dumbass shit. Like, that's not even the right. Like, you stood up on the roller coaster, he's about to get decapitated. That's your fault. Wooden constructed coaster with nails sticking out of every which way and sagging boards as far as the eye can see. When the car returned, Tamar, the victim, was no longer in her seat and the seatbelt had been unbuckled. This oh ride- Oh my God, was their head just like stapled to a fucking wooden post? It has no loops or extreme curves. It does, however, feature an 80 foot drop 
that gives the sensation of being likely to be thrown from the train. According to her fiance, something was very wrong with the ride and she panicked. Why would you panic? So your first thing to do is while the ride is going, you unbuckle your seatbelt. I'm free! <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> She said something's wrong and then got out of the fucking ride. In what world is that going to fucking save you? I'm free! At the fifth and final drop, she was thrown from her seat. Spokespersons for the park cited that the ride was functioning as intended. And the Indiana Fire Marshal declared their- Yeah, like you wouldn't even be able to sue. That'd be like, dude, you unbuckled your- The fiance can't even sue. It's like, oh, your wife unbuckled her seatbelt. Be nothing wrong with the ride, mechanical or otherwise. All restraints were functioning properly. Well, I mean, come on, yeah, no shit. You f***ing, like, freaked out and took I mean, listen, I have panic attacks, too, where I'm like, <gasps> and I Why are you even at an amusement park if you would freak out that badly that you're just gonna be like, I need to unbuckle? That's old rides for you, too. If you're in a fucking... If you're in a new ride, you can't even unbuckle. You're just locked in. I get up and I have to go, but I would feel like, at that point, you close your eyes and you just breathe. You do, like, the... <sighs> Because, I mean, how long would the ride be? A minute? I mean, two minutes max? Two minutes max? Some people Dude, panic. Some of these rides are like 30 seconds. That Those are the letdown ones where you're like hype as shit, and it's like literally not even a minute ride. Especially you've gone through four drops, and you can't just do the last one. In 2005, the family sued the park and the manufacturer of the train of the coast, the coaster, the actual train carts. They settled for an undisclosed amount out of court. Conversations with workers and interviews with Ecotase, the executive committee of the American Coaster Enthusiasts. Who the f actually made that coaster enthusiast man what i'm saying is like it's not even a business it's just them being like oh i love coasters love them i love coasters well they say that the lap bar had been broken for some time and was being rigged together with an old lanyard despite the public claim that tamar had been standing up the official announcement was that tamar had done nothing to risk her life but later on the statement changed accusing her of wait what so she didn't unbuckle herself being careless tamar who weighed under 100 pounds at the time may have been too small for the bar to work effectively a couple things after that that's very sad gain some weight only let the fatties go on the roller coasters is what I gotta say. Who, who's at fault here? I think Tamar. You think Tamar had a panic attack? I think the <laughs> raven didn't do its job, dude. Especially it was held with a lanyard. What the f***? <laughs> Anyways, Voyage Coasters, June of 2003. The Voyage, a metal structured coaster with wooden tracks. Voted 2013 top wooden roller coaster in the nation. Oh, it's a wooden roller coaster. There's one in Kansas City at Worlds of Fun called the Timberwolf. I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. It, whiplash. I mean, I think that people have gotten legitimate. That's whip every wooden roller coaster is just exactly this. This one angle, and that's it. Flash on that ride. Oh yeah, she's rough. <laughs> it's a one fucking sitting there. Oh yeah, she's rough. You're sitting there going, fucking the whole, <laughs> the whole way, just holding onto the front bar, just fucking waiting for that ride to stop. 1.2 mile long track with 90 degree banking and hard turns with over 24 seconds total of weightless fall time. It opened in 2006, developed by the Gravity Group. God, get over yourself. You feel every bolt that it passes. The fucking a roller coaster company. What do you want to call it? The Gravity Group. The remaining front of the custom coasters that designed the Raven, themed after the Mayflower. As the structure began to sag and the ride became too rough for most passengers, so they got new train cars to soften the experience. This resulted in the cars being traded between coasters and cars tested, but eventually never kept. And in June of 2021, a passenger was found unconscious after the ride. Coroner declares that cause of death to be internal bleeding from tear in the thoracic artery. Dawn, who was from Ohio, was perfectly fine when she mounted the ride. Extreme drops and jarring banks of the ride were said to have caused the tear in artery and resulting to the drops to allow her to bleed internally. Holy <laughs> yeah, just like- Do you think she had like pre-existing health conditions or was she like perfectly fine? Cause I like, I, I, I feel like the average person wouldn't just die at a at a ride going left and right and all of a sudden you tear a literal artery in your body just from violent movements as with the rave event all inspections performed and no safety violations or flaws in the procedure or structure were found i just don't believe it if they're comparing it to the raven where the f is ecotase they found no foul play they found no foul play i think big coasters is keeping us out dude i want to talk to the guy who drinks his whiskey glass and in, in the towers of these amusement parks and he devises these plans to shut the families up next up we have the one that oh baby this is in my neck of the woods 
Schlitterbahn in Kansas City, Kansas. And this was on a thing called the Verruckt Water Slide. Let me tell you something. This is just me talking to you. Because oh, dying on a water slide would be even fucking scarier. I know this one very personally. The only other water park we had in Kansas City was connected to Worlds of Fun, the amusement park, I said. And it was called Oceans of Fun. This is a legitimate memory I have. You have, like, one of the shittest lazy rivers of all time. And everybody likes a nice lazy river. I was swimming through there. I got a Band-Aid stuck in my mouth. Oh, oh my god, yo, I would get tested. For, I would get tested for shit. Yo, why was your mouth open though? What are you just swimming around just just breathing and shit? And a legitimate dipping dots cart fell into the lazy river and they took it out and they just dried off the packaging and still sold it. <laughs> Dippin' Dots. I saw that oh with my, my eyes. Oh my god, at the same time. And I remember I legitimately had to get an AIDS test because of the Band-Aid. That's, that's not even joking, because there was blood on the Band-Aids. I didn't have AIDS. I don't have AIDS. I don't have HIV. I'm saying it like I do, and I'm, it does, I don't have it. Slitter Bomb, when it opened up, it was supposed to be this big thing because it was new. You know, everyone's like, fuck oceans of fun. We're going to Slitter Bomb! But, it all came crashing down. That looks horrifying if you have no there's nothing holding you down you're just jumping right on that fucking thing that looks too steep with the verruckt water slide and the water slide the Ver oh what dude i feel like i'm gonna slam right i'm gonna rock it right through that cage mesh i'm gonna be fucking going so quick Rucked, which is German for insane. It was the world's tallest water slide in 2014. The 168 foot structure meant to open in 2013 and it didn't open until the next year due to the rafts becoming airborne. Tests with sandbags resulted in flying inflatable rafts loaded with sand hitting speeds of 70 miles per hour. And I don't know if I can find footage of this, but they showed that on the news. And let me tell you, people were like, eh, maybe Oceans of Fun isn't that bad. In the grand scheme of it all, I wouldn't mind just going hitting the wave pool at Oceans of Fun. It was horrifying. When they say it became airbound, that they were flying. Big sandbags. I remember there was even dummies at one point flying through the air at 70 miles an hour, okay? Oh it was open God. with the addition of netting stretched over an arc of metal bands made along the area. But that netting's just gonna fucking kill you or you're gonna rip right through it. Where riders were most Yeah, you're gonna be like a cheese grater. You're gonna be in fucking cubes. <laughs> if that's metal, if that's like a metal fucking cage, you're just gonna be wedged through it. Lucky to become airborne. So there, this is what they decided to do. So because people at a certain point kept going airborne on the slide, they covered the entire thing in a metal mesh. So then it, it's like, okay, well they'll just they'll just hit the metal, and then they'll, <laughs> <laughs> they'll just smack. They'll, instead of flying into their fucking depths, they'll hit the metal cage going 75 miles an hour, and that'll save them. This was never opened publicly, I don't think, because if I remember correctly, this guy, when this happened was, it was like they were getting ready to open, and this was all the special people in Kansas City got to come and test out the park or go there early, like investors and all that stuff. In 2016, the tragic death of a 10-year-old no. named Caleb, which he was the oh son of Oh my god, they sent a 10-year-old down that fucking slide? Kansas legislator shut the ride down for good. Caleb, riding at the front of the raft with three passengers, became airborne at one of the dangerous drops. Hitting the safety net was reported to have done great damage to his neck. It was later revealed that the impact was so severe that he was decapitated. Once again, that Oh my god! He got fuck. He got his head fucking sliced off. I thought it would just fucking brute force kill you. Became something too, and that was something fucking insane. I used to know a girl when I was in high school working and stuff, and she said that she was one of the people that saw that. Oh, she saw it. She saw it in person. She was one of the people. Like his head rolled down the slide, and it was like in the pool of bloody water, and she was like around the area. I don't know if she was in the water. I don't want to go up that far. This is also all speculation from almost 10 years ago, so give my memory some rest here. It was later revealed that the ride had not been adequately designed or inspected. There were no restraints other than some Velcro or no curve to the half pipe that would have prevented the ride from going airborne. At the You know what? All they had to do to fix this was make this part higher. They were going too quick at the peak. If they just made this 20 feet higher, then it, it, they would have slowed down enough to where they'd be able to fucking go back down and then maybe hit like a, a just a straight water path. Committed that a shoulder restraint be installed. A shoulder restraint. I'm guessing that. Does that mean tuck it in? 
Oh, you mean like go like that? I don't like that. That's a claustrophobic nightmare. It, it is. That's like some Hellraiser. You're stuck in a tube and there's like metal netting. Your soul, you're going to die. Oh, just like flying. And then your tube fucking rotates and you're just stuck in a shoulder strap drowning. Damn this deal. Later on, due to this extreme negligence, the owner and operator of the park were severally indicted and charged with involuntary manslaughter, aggravated battery, aggravated child endangerment and negligence and interference with law enforcement. I don't think the Kansas legislator was too happy about that, I'm gonna guess. The ride was demolished and the law is in place that allowed for- Dude, like that just looks awful. If they, they didn't even make this like a high peak. If they, like, maybe even if they didn't make it higher, they just pushed it back and made it a fucking, like a, a steeper climb. Regulate and self-inspect was repealed and replaced with new legislator with more strict rules. During the investigation, it was eventually discovered that Caleb and his passengers were not the only ones hurt. Over 13 others over the course of the ride's lifetime were hurt and never appropriately documented. And the two designers of the ride were indicted on charges that they were not qualified, nor did they follow any protocols in designing and testing the ride. They also performed no basic safety inspection to any quality and attempted to hide evidence from investigators. I think to recoup some of the losses, they had like conventions or something in the parking lot. Yeah, it was just weird, especially because the slide was so big and you're just like, oh, he got his head cut off on that. And now, especially I'm finding out that 13 other people were hurt. But anyways, to keep it up, Terminal Velocity, Extreme World, Wisconsin. That's a fucking sick a music park name. Extreme World? Oh, dude, I would have been busting out my britches trying to go to ex Extreme World every weekend. In 2010, it was a free fall experience offering a 50 mile per hour, 100 foot free fall drive. Drop. Free, free fall. Free fall. A 12 year old. Some kid's gonna fall through the fucking netting. After a ride operator did not engage safety net before dropping a girl. Riders are treated to a free fall experience by hoisting them 140 feet. So they just dropped her to her death. They, they didn't even. They didn't deploy the netting. They just. They just dropped her and she splat on the ground. In the air via a harness. The rider is released from the cable and allowed to fall into a safety net 40 feet off the ground, reaching a speeds of 50 miles per hour. Ride operator was distracted and did not raise the safety net and stopped the ride too soon. Pulled the lever without looking, only to realize his mistake and try to lift the net. Parents were filming as she fell and hit the ground, and she was taken to the hospital. She had 10 fractures in the spine and pelvis, another in the skull, brain swelling, Liver, spleen, and intestines were lacerated. Heart stopped. Is that her? Times it was revived via CPR. She was near paralyzed and only able to communicate by blinking. She was hospitalized for months, but, but survived and eventually regained ability to walk. No failsafe mechanism to prevent this injury. Right operator was determined to be at fault for not paying attention and pled second degree bodily injury. Park management. Bro, like you should be able to sue the park millions of dollars. If you fucking pay like $50 to fucking go on this ride and they paralyze you circumvented police order to preserve the scene for an investigation but did not adhere to this and were caught working on the ride to hide evidence the ride itself was extremely rusted and the family sued and won for three point okay, five god that this good went through it dude at the same time i, I would want more than 3.5 million if i'm being honest Just, why not a crisp 10 a crisp 10 for that deal especially 10 fractures in spine and pelvis that just seems like it should be 10 million a million for each fracture why not you know that guy was definitely god, i know i'm digging like, for gold i had a bugger like that He's like, yeah, I mean, I get off at A, Rebecca. Rebecca, are you coming over or not? I'm getting Panda Express on the way home. Are you coming? Oh, shit, the net! And then, it, you know, it just happened. We have Paramount's Great America Amusement Park in Santa Clara. In 1999, Labor Day accident involving a trespasser who, avoiding all signs placed every 50 feet, jumped two fences in order to crawl underneath a low-passing roller coaster to retrieve his wife's beloved baseball cap. Oh, my God. What was the team? <laughs> what, what was the team? Renato, a 25-year-old, earned a Darwin Award beneath the Top Gun roller coaster when a passenger's leg collided with his head at speeds of 50 miles per hour. Some person just clubbed him with the f***ing leg. The unique design of the roller coaster leaves patrons with their legs dangling in the air, giving them more of a weightless, suspensory feeling. The dangling leg of Jessica... Med Wait, so they hit somebody that wasn't on the ride? Dina collided with Renato's head and simultaneously decapitated him and broke her leg in two places. Whoa, her f leg decapitated the guy? That bitch was drinking some milk. Sure, it broke her leg in two places, but to f decapitate a man? Holy sh! that's awesome. While waiting for park security to clear the scene, Medina was not allowed to disembark the ride. With her obviously broken, dangling leg, she was forced to wait suspended for an additional 40 minutes before park personnel came to her aid. 
Holy, you know her leg had to look mangled too. Medina, as a result, lost her job. Being that person, I lost her leg. Wait, lost her leg to swelling and infection. Lost her job and massive scars. I wanted to say being her what isn't ideal, obviously, but being in the scenario where somebody dies, she could probably sue and she, yeah, lost her job, but she's still alive, you know? Almost lost her leg due to infection and swelling and now bears lifelong guilt, nightmares, and massive scars down her leg. I don't think she should bear the guilt. I think she should still feel bad that person died, but I don't think she should personally feel guilty that she was literally, like, she couldn't do anything about it. As a reminder, every day, she is suing both the park and Renato's state. Renato's wife of two months was suing the park, seeking over a million in damages as the signs were only in English and he may not have been able to read them. In addition, she claimed the fence paneling was loose. If there's a giant roller coaster, maybe Dog Andre. I think that's a universal f***ing <laughs> language. I feel bad for Jessica. Jessica Medina, it's not your fault, it, you know, it, but still, how would you not feel like you, it's like, I took a person's life, I rode this ride, and my leg was the result of this person's life. It could have been anybody else's leg, but it was hers, and now she fucking is mutilated. I think she's also probably thinking, if, you know how when you're ride, your legs are dangling on that ride, you can still move your legs up. Like, if she just picked her legs up, he wouldn't have died. Uh, well, no, somebody else behind her would have killed him. With the Ferris wheel at the Jambalaya Festival in Louisiana. May 2023, riders at the Jambalaya Festival in Louisiana were left terrorized after the Ferris wheel halted. Jolted and metal creaking sounds broke the silence. These portable carnival rides- Damn, dying on a Ferris wheel ain't even cool. That's just, like, sad. Came through the area are under lax inspections, and the aging mechanism that controlled the tires that spun to control the turning of the wheel by park reports went flat, causing the wheel to spin freely. This was contradicted by patron footage as the entire structure had leaned and the ride was spinning very fast while operators desperately tried to pull people off the ride as they passed. That's not going to work. Trying to try to pull people off as they passed. Hold on! Grab my hand! <laughs> That's how they do it at the Jambalaya Festival. Now, God damn it, I got jalapeno and andouane sausages on my f***ing eyes. Come on, grab my hand. I feel like you should be able to time that. Like, I, like it's probably old people and shit, though, because those are the people that are going on Ferris wheels. But if this happened, I feel like I'd probably just hold on to the handrail here, put my legs up, and then just jump off when I was, like, five feet off the ground. And some patrons jumped off the ride in a panic and a two-year-old was almost flung from the ride as the structure skipped the rails. There were no safety fasteners and only a bar stopping people off the side. Anytime you see one of those like state fair redneck uh, amusement park things, I, I never go on those. Those are a recipe for disaster. I'm telling you, these things are absolutely f uh also, I remember one time I saw this carny at one of these things. I think he got arrested that night, but he was spitting at people when they went by and it was so fast that you couldn't tell it was him. But he was just sitting there eating sunflower seeds and he was like hawking loogies at people and just laughing. I remember, I think I was like nine and I was like, I don't think I want to come back here, mom. Next up, we have the ghost train in Sydney, Australia. In 1979, the ghost train ride caught fire at the Luna Park, Sydney, killing seven people. The park was unprepared wow. when the train caught fire due to low staffing and inadequate firefighting equipment, and the fire completely destroyed the train. Originally, the fire was blamed on... And that's fucking terrifying, especially if you're, like, locked in on the ride and you can't get off. Trickle faults, but arson was also claimed. Ooh. So one thinks it was intentional, huh? Ironically, the train cars would enter through a door called Hell's Doorway at the start of the ride. That's unfortunate. Most of the time during the ride was spent in the dark. The ride also featured dancing skeletons, an ape monster, and a dragon's head. And the ride also featured a fake fireplace, which, according to Witness, is where the actual fire took place. The irony of this ride is haunting. The fire broke out at 10.15 p.m. on the ride and 35 people were on board. Staff raised the alarm and started to pull people from the ride and the park's fire hose had a low water pressure and could only cover part of the ride as it sprayed, so it took an hour to get the fire under control. Originally, the staff thought everyone had escaped the fire, but the bodies of seven people were soon found inside. Oh the bodies revealed God. a man and his two children and four students from the Waverly College. That is horrible. The low water pressure thing is pretty insane. There must be like an immediate realization when you turn it on, you're just like, this is not what we had planned. The euthanasia coaster. The euthanasia coaster is a hypothetical. <laughs> oh, hypothetical. I was going to say euthanasia coaster. That just sounds, that sounds like they're, you're, they're trying to kill you. Cool roller coaster that is designed to kill you. Yes, you heard that right. A person made a roller coaster that was designed to be the funnest way to die, which honestly, when he says it like that, you're like, that's that rules. Actually, that would be sweet. Would I rather be lethal injection? 
Hell no, dude. The ride plummets down a 1,640-foot near-vertical drop before it enters in a series... And it just keeps going into a series of smaller loops. And so the... Pra well, I'm assuming the G-force G gets stronger and stronger. ...series of loops that gets progressively tighter and tighter. The riders would sustain 10 G-forces for a full minute. Everybody looks like those pilots and those, like, training things where they're like... <sighs> It's like their face is all sunken in. This would cause your blood rush to your arms and legs, which would starve your brain of oxygen. Shortly after falling unconscious, the brain would quickly follow into death. The designer of the ride, Juliano Urbanos, stated the goal of the concept was to take life. He actually made a fucking concept for this ride, like he wanted to do it. With elegance and euphoria. Juliano Urbanos feels like, I feel like he is the only roller coaster designer to ever actually tell the truth of like, it's not necessarily about the fun, it's about putting people in a near death experience, except he was just like, the near death, I want to kill you. You almost think he's like in an all black suit and he's like, with elegance and euphoria, ride my ride. What would he call the ride? The death spiral. Death spiral works. There's that. I'm trying to think of something like in Kansas City. The death City, spiral just sounds like a real roller coaster though. Cause he spins. What about that, dude? Dude, that'd be some sick merch too. Some of those like '90s airbrush Tasmanian devil things. The brain hemorrhage. The hemorrhage. Something where your brain fucking loses oxygen. Tweety birds around his head. And last but not least is the human trebuchet in Middlemore Water Park, England. This water park had a trebuchet in the grass where customers could uh, pay. This just seems. This just seems like you, they're gonna fucking overshoot you. Roughly. 70 US dollars to be launched into the air and land into a safety net. I'm gonna go ahead and assume that that did not happen accurately. Riders soared through the air at 60 miles an hour and traveled a distance of 75 feet. The safety net they were supposed to land on was rather thin and also not very wide. It was about the size of a tennis court. That feels Are so small. Are you like straight jacketed in too? It looks like they can't move. For human body to be flung that far? What's on the list, man? What do I expect? That's not safe. Duh. Many onlookers noted how many riders barely made it onto the net in the last second. In 2000, a middle-aged woman named Stella Young landed in the net, bounced up, and fell through the netting and broke her pelvis. The ride continued on despite this, and two years later, a 19-year-old Oxford student, Dino Yankoff, missed the net by a few inches and hit the edge. He broke his legs Ooh. and his spine upon impact and died later in the hospital. The paramedic that attended to Yankoff said the damage done was, quote-unquote, Horrific. And that Yankov knew that his chances of survival were grim, yelling, I am going to die to Picard the paramedic. That is horrible. You know, it kind of reminds me of a little bit is whenever that guy, the skiing accident, when he. Okay, see, that's terrifying. Knowing, knowing that you're going to die and then yelling that you are going to die. Like, that's so much worse than just hitting the fucking ground going 100 miles an hour and just getting decapitated. On that ski and he hits his shins on the uh the ski slope which is like pretty much raw ice and as he's sliding down he's like my ankles are broken my ankles are broken and the guy's like he has broken ankles and he's like i have broken ankles ah! i got cool. broken ankles it's coming ah! for <laughs> i bet it was not like that but the guy actually died so that's not funny and we're not going to joke about that the two men in charge of adjusting the weights for the release of each trebuchet pull were on trial for manslaughter, but are eventually cleared of the charges due to lack of evidence. How was that possible? They were there for the trebuchet. They f and a man They died. manned the trebuchet. He missed the net, and they died. I guess we're just going to have to chalk this one up to an oopsie daisy, ain't we? That's fucking England, dude. That's what British people sound like. 50 people had to use the trebuchet that year, leading to Yankov's death. The catapult was put out of use during the investigation and was not used again. Which also, I just want to say, that is the most British sounding ride ever. A fucking trebuchet. A literal medieval catapult, basically. We used to throw stones at big buildings with this <laughs> thing. God. Instead, let's just do humans. Let's just do humans. That concludes our video, and I just want to say this. If you're thinking about going into a fun amusement park this spring or summer, maybe think just fucking see if the ride looks safe to you. That was a W video, though. All right.